recording. Um, hi everyone, my name is Jamie Ross. Uh, welcome. I work in the Human Resources Department here at the city and I am the one coordinating this recruitment process for city planner and city planner trainee, which is why we're all here today. We have some open positions and uh, some pretty exciting opportunities that we want to tell you about and give you information on and answer any questions that you might have. So um, this meeting is being recorded, as we've mentioned. Um, we will post a link to this recording in the job posting. So if there's anybody else that you know of that would be interested in hearing this information, you can point them to our website and to that posting and they can watch it whenever they like, or if you enjoy it so much, you feel free to watch it again. Um, anyway, this recruitment today, just for the record, is, is February the 23rd, uh, 2022. And um, so again, this is the information meeting for city planner and city planner trainee. This is a recruitment that is open to the public and it's open now to apply for, and it closes on March 14th at midnight, but we don't want you to wait till the last minute, but just so you know, you could apply up until midnight. Um, only online applications are accepted and we're going to go or I will go over the uh, process to apply in detail in the second half of this information meeting. And um, so we're here to give information about the position and answer, uh, answer any questions that you might have. If after this meeting you have more questions, feel free to call me. My number is 707-543-3066 and that is my direct light. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Serena. Uh, she'll introduce herself and she'll go into our next section. Jamie, I'm going to interrupt you before so I can translate to Spanish, if that's okay. Oh, yes. Buenas tardes a todas las personas que nos acompañan el día de hoy. Eh, les recordamos que esta reunión está siendo grabada para las personas que no pueden estar aquí esta tarde. Y la, grabar, la grabación se va a cargar en línea eh, hoy por la mañana, o, hoy por la, no, o por la noche o mañana por la mañana. Eh, esta, eh, esta aplicación... Es, eh, esta reunión es una reunión informativa para la aplicación de City Planner o City Planner Trainee, eh, planeador urbano y, o aprendiz de planeador urbano. El reclutamiento está abierto a, al público a partir eh, de la semana anterior. Está abierto ahora y cierra el 14 de marzo de 2022 a la medianoche. Les pedimos que no esperen hasta entonces para aplicar. Eh, solo se, aplica, se aceptarán aplicaciones en línea y se repasará el proceso en detalle en la segunda mitad de esta conversación. Estamos aquí para darles información sobre el puesto y el proceso de solicitud y responder sus preguntas. Eh, las preguntas también se pueden hacer en español y vamos a traducir lo que las personas preguntan en, este, en esta sesión. Si tienen alguna pregunta, eh, Jamie uh, um, dio su teléfono para que ustedes pues, se contacten con ella, que es eh, número 707-543-3066. Thank you, uh, Jamie, and I think Serena, you're, you're next. And before right. we do that, can I just confirm that you're seeing the pre presentation mode? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? All right. So, um, hi, everybody. I'm Serena Lino. I'm the Administrative Services Officer, and I handle the uh, recruitment process once the recruit recruitment closes and then we go step into the interview um, stage. So that's where I take over from a process perspective. So for today's purposes, um, I'll be a moderator of sorts as we progress through. So if you have any questions, um, there will be natural stopping points along the way where feel free to use the raise hand feature or if you have questions throughout, you don't wanna wait, you can put it in the chat box and then I'll be able to call out your question as we get to those stopping points. So feel free, um, this is your opportunity to you know, hear from us as well as ask any sort of questions that you may have. Um, let's see here. Uh, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to uh, Jessica and Claire who will introduce themselves um, and talk a little bit about our department and the positions that we are hiring for today. So, uh, Serena, if it's okay, can I translate that uh, yeah. for everyone? Uh, lo que estaba mencionando Serena uh, anteriormente es que se va a revisar la agenda que, que tenemos para el día de hoy sobre la reunión. Las preguntas eh, pueden ponerlas en el cuadro de, del chat o levantar eh, la mano. La función de levantar la mano está en reactions en, el, en la parte de abajo de su, de su Zoom. Eh, se van a iniciar. Eh, 
a, a presentando eh, al equipo y eh, a continuación van a hablar eh, Claire y Jessica sobre en general de, de qué se trata la posición y cómo va a funcionar todo el proceso. And I think we're going to do a quick round of introductions, Serena. Is that? Yep. Okay. So, uh, Claire, do you want to start? Yeah, I'll start. Hi, um, my name is Claire Hartman, and I actually um, currently I'm the director of planning and economic development, which is the department in which this position would be in. Um, but yeah, I grew up in Sonoma County, lived in many of the different communities in the county. Um, I started with City of Santa Rosa 23 years ago as a city planner uh, and then slowly was promoted um, to senior planner, supervising planner, uh, deputy director of planning, and now I'm the department head. So this is an excellent uh, entry point into the city um, and also just all things planning, which is quite broad. Um, and so um, with that, I'm excited to offer the, the, this position. Um, and hopefully multiple positions here. And so welcome and uh, Jessica. Great, thanks Claire. Um, so hey everybody, my name is Jessica Jones. I am the supervising planner for our current development team here. Uh, so we've got two divisions within our planning department um, and or with our, within our planning division, we've got the current development team, which primarily focuses on reviewing uh, new development um, projects here at the city. And then we have an advanced planning team that focuses on policy development. So I oversee our current development team. Um, so I'm super excited to have you guys here. Um, like Claire, um, I've also been with the city for quite some time. Um, I started here in 2006 as a city planner. Worked, worked my way up to senior planner and then ultimately supervising planner for our advanced planning policy team. Um, I took a, a short break um, working for the town of Windsor as a community development director. Uh, and now I'm back with the city. Um, I'm super excited. This is just a, a phenomenal place to work um, and why I chose to come back to the city. Um, so I'm just, I'm excited to uh, present this information to you guys and hear any questions you might have. Um, so we want to move on to uh, Beatriz. Thank you, Jessica. My name is Beatriz Guerrero, and I work for the advanced planning team, and as, I'm a senior planner, specifically an equity and public health planner. I, most of my work is uh, focused on the general plan update and doing community outreach, specifically uh, targeting populations that didn't, uh, have been historically marginalized. And I just arrived to the city a year ago. I was born in, in Mexico City, and I live in Santa Rosa right now. So very happy to see so many uh, new faces coming to, to, the, um, to the meeting and uh, who are willing to uh, apply and join the, the city of Santa Rosa. I'm very excited. Um, solo para traducir esto al español, mi nombre es Beatriz Guerrero. Eh, yo trabajo como eh, Equity and Public Health Planner, que significa eh, Planeador Urbana eh, de Salud Pública y Equidad. Y mucho de mi trabajo está enfocado en el eh, plan general y eh, incluir eh, a las comunidades que han estado históricamente marginadas. Entonces, muy contenta de estar en esta reunión, eh, ver a, a personas que, que nuevas que están tratando de unirse a la ciudad y bienvenidos a esta conversación. Muchas gracias. All right, Connor. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Connor McKay. I'm city planner in the current planning team. Um, I joined the city in January of 2020. And um, I was born in Santa Rosa, and I currently live in Healdsburg. Great, thanks. Michelle, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Michelle Montoya. I'm an administrative secretary in the planning division, and um, I support, um, help support some of our boards and um, commit our boards, commission, and committees, and um, also provide support to our advanced planning team. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and reshare our PowerPoint here, and uh, and we can get on, get on to our primary reason why we're here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I don't know, Beatriz, is there anything you wanted to add um, more to the introductions in Spanish? Do you want me to translate um, your just just your positions? Is sure. that okay? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, So, eh, para las personas que nos están escuchando, eh, si no pudieron eh, escuchar las, las presentaciones de cada persona, eh, Jamie Rose es nuestra analista de, de recursos humanos, eh, Claire Hartman es nuestra directora de planeación y desarrollo económico, Serena es eh, nuestra oficial de servicios administrativos, 
Uh, Jessica Jones es eh, la planeadora supervisora de eh, desarrollo actual. Eh, mi nombre es Beatriz Guerrero y soy planeadora uh, urbana senior. Y Conor McKee, nuestro planeador urbano más, más, uh, de más reciente adquisición. Great, thank you. All right. So Serena or Jamie, you want to go over quickly our agenda? Yep, sure thing. So we've already touched on it a little bit, but we'll, uh, we've already covered the introductions. Um, now Jessica and Claire are going to talk a little bit more about the positions that we have available. And then we're going to hear directly from Connor and Beatriz around what it's like to be a planner or a new planner for the city of Santa Rosa. So talk, they'll talk about each of their uh, particular perspectives. And then Jamie's going to go over more details about the application process. And we're going to visit the website where you can actually find the position that you'll be applying for. And then, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we'll have a time for uh, any questions. So when we get to those points, you can, again, use the raise hand feature, or you can go ahead and put the question in the chat box that I can then read out during that time. So, um, all right, I think we're good. Go ahead. Next slide. Okay. Can I jump into Trinity? Yeah, please. Yeah, go for it. Um, para la agenda de hoy tenemos las presentaciones que ya escucharon. Tenemos en segundo lugar la descripción de los puestos disponibles que tenemos eh, de planeador o planeador urbana y aprendiz de planeador urbano. Y eh, tenemos también eh, una descripción de, de qué se trata ser nuevo planeador urbano en, en Santa Rosa. Y vamos a hablar, eh, Connor y yo, sobre nuestra experiencia como los, las personas que eh, somos más nuevas en la ciudad. Eh, vamos a hablar después sobre el proceso de solicitud, así como vamos a entrar al, al, a nuestro website para ver la posibilidad de, de seguir el proceso de solicitud y vamos a dar espacio para que ustedes hagan preguntas, ya sea en inglés o en español. Muchas gracias. All right, thank you. All right, Claire, take it away. Okay, so I'm happy to say that we have multiple city planner slash trainee positions available. Um, so we're going to talk about what these positions are um, and also what are we looking for and what's the difference between city planner and city planner trainee. So first of all, we have three positions currently available uh, and one of them is permanent, meaning it's ongoing. It doesn't have a time limit. Um, you'd come on board and you'd work for the city for hopefully as long as we do. Um, and uh, that position is going to focus on current development. And what that means is that is uh, working our public counter, uh, maybe processing some minor permits, like tree removal, um, handling questions on the phone, um, and uh, to some extent, um, participation with presentations uh, to decision-making bodies, and also um, to community groups or neighborhood groups. So that's one full-time ongoing permanent position that's available. Um, but we also have the opportunity to hire um, what we call limited term. And so those are for, um, they're just currently budgeted for a specific time period. So in this case, we have two limited term positions available. Uh, one of them is for three years. And that is uh, similar to the ongoing position, uh, sort of a jack of all trades city planner, uh, customer service, participation at meetings, maybe some presentations. Um, the second one is a two-year limited term, and that one's focused, the way it's been funded, that one is focused primarily on helping the city with its housing production, so particularly affordable housing um, or housing that has specific timelines, so helping the city meet those goals because we're really interested in housing production. So those are three positions that are currently available to apply for. Um, you would be applying for city planner or city planner trainee, and Jessica will talk about the difference between that um, and how we uh, work with you um, in your progression, your professional development with the city. Um, but for right now, those are the three openings. And uh, what we'll do is we'll collect your interests and your applications. And uh, essentially, if you are at all interested in these positions, apply now, because we will actually keep a list Um, and if there are future openings, we'll go back to this list. So it's important if you are at all interested to apply. All right, great. Thank you, Claire. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd just talk quickly about um, uh, the differences between the city planner position and a city planner trainee. Uh, so a city planner is really, um, it's, it is an entry level position like Claire mentioned. Um, 
uh, it is somebody who has um, at least one year of planning experience, um, as well as a degree in planning or a related field. Um, and so the city planner is uh, usually a primary point of contact for any general planning inquiries at our front counter or via email and phone that we get uh, throughout the week. Um, the city planners also process minor um, permitting projects, um, design review, um, conditional use permits, those types of things. Um, and that does include working with other city staff and, and other departments to gather conditions of approval and, and do project review. Um, and then it also includes doing outreach to the community uh, for the different projects that we have. Um, in addition to processing the minor permits, and there will also be opportunities for you guys to uh, make presentations to our various city boards uh, in presenting these projects that come through. Um, and the boards that we have here at the City of Santa Rosa include the Planning Commission, uh, which reviews our major conditional use permits, variances, um, uh, rezonings, those types of things. Uh, we have our Design Review Board, which reviews design review for commercial, um, industrial, and multifamily projects. Um, we have our Cultural Heritage Board, which reviews projects in our various preservation districts here at the city. Uh, and then um, we have our zoning administrator, which is a low, lower level review body. It's a single person. It's typically one of our uh, senior planners fills that role. Um, and the zoning administrator takes action on our more minor permits. So minor design reviews, minor conditional use permits, minor landmark alterations, that type of thing. Um, and then we also have our waterways advisory committee, um, which reviews any projects uh, that are um, adjacent to waterways or creeks um, or have waterways or creeks on the property itself. Um, and they are an advisory body. So you would go to them first before you go to the review authority. Um, and so city planners um, are generally expected to demonstrate a solid foundation in planning principles and practices and has some experience in environmental review, development review, and then public counter support. So the difference between that position and the city planner trainee position um, primarily is um, somebody who doesn't quite yet have either the uh, years of experience required. So again, it's one year of experience that's needed for a city planner. So if you don't have that full year um, or and or you don't ha yet have your degree, but you're working towards it and, and will be getting it within the next year, um, that would be the, the city planner training. So it, it truly is an entry level position. Um, and, and the city planner trainees would be working on um, most of everything that I just talked about with the city planner, um, but they would be doing it um, you know, with help from one of our existing um, planning staff. Um, and it would be basically on the job training. Um, and we would provide, in addition to the on, on the job training, we would provide formal training as well to help you get to where you need to be so that you can then promote uh, to city planner. Um, and so what we're looking for with a trainee is somebody who can demonstrate um, a foundation and an interest in the planning principles and practices. Um, and that can be through internships that you've had, work that you've done with your schoolwork, that kind of thing. Um, and then also experience um, in the community uh, that provides you with um, some background in what we do here in planning. Um, and so Claire, did you wanna go over what we're looking for specifically or do you want me to do that? I, and I, what I would add is uh, many of our successful planners started as city planner trainee. So um, it's a great way to enter the city if you're still working on your degree uh, maybe you're in your senior year, um, you can, and you can uh, juggle both the, the job and finishing that degree, then this is an opportunity for you because we will give you the on the job training. Um, and a lot of the trainees not only go on to be city planners, but oftentimes they're promoted or, you know, and some of them are uh, local planning directors in Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that, um, Yeah, I can't think of it, uh, anything else to add in, about the training. So in terms of what we're looking for, um, oh, I know there was one thing that's why I was trying to think. Um, the trainee application is not in competition with the city planner position, right? So we're looking for um, people who are 
eager to learn, um, like working with people. We do a lot of people engagement, um, helping customers uh, figure out what they can do on their property, uh, helping applicants uh, get through uh, our zoning code and get to an action so they can build their, their, their building or their apartments. Um, and so you're really in a uh, customer service type of job with either of these. And the only difference between the trainee and the city planners is that as a trainee, you just haven't had the chance to, to get this on the job training, but that's what we'll provide. Um, we do work independently. So, you know, we do look for self-starters uh, who can manage, a, you know, a, a collection of projects or tasks and um, can work independently uh, with, with some oversight and we're certainly there to help you. Um, and we are um, at this time really um, interested in candidates that are bilingual. Um, we want, we want uh, bilingual uh, planners because uh, a lot of our clientele uh, speak in Spanish and maybe they're bilingual, but you know, their comfort zone is in Spanish and we wanna meet our customers where they feel comfortable. Because again, we're in the, we're in the help business. Uh, we wanna make sure they understand and they are comfortable participating in the process. Um, also, we want uh, to continue uh, with a diverse group of city planners because what we do is we do, we do policy making, we do engagement, and we want our community to feel comfortable working with our planners. Uh, anything I might have left off on your, uh, the list of items that you're looking for, Jess? No, I, I think that, that that covers it. So I'd like to give an opportunity for Beatrice to uh, to give some Spanish interpretation for us. Thank you so much, uh, Jessica. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, translate for what you both uh, mentioned. So I'm going to take a little uh, while. Eh, para todos los que nos están escuchando, eh, voy a traducir lo que, lo que mencionaron eh, Claire y, y Jessica. Primero, eh, la descripción general de los puestos que están disponibles para planeador urbano o aprendiz de planeador urbano eh, o urbana. Eh, existen tres posiciones eh, disponibles. La primera es una posición permanente que está enfocada en desarrollo actual, es decir, eh, todos los cambios que se hacen en vivienda, en, en desarrollos eh, de, de vivienda y otro tipo de, de desarrollos que no son solo eh, de vivienda, pero comerciales y, y, y de otros tipos. Eh, hay otras dos posiciones. Eh, la primera es eh, una posición, perdón, otras dos posiciones que tienen términos limitados, es decir, que están eh, programadas presupuestalmente para algunos años y pueden o no eh, unirse a la, a la ciudad permanentemente, pero por ahora están aprobados con, con dinero que, que, nos, que nos llegaron a través de, de eh, becas de, de, del Estado. El primero es un término limitado de tres años, enfocado también en desarrollo actual, es, es decir, eh, proveer servicio a los clientes que están buscando eh, desarrollo de, de vivienda u otro tipo de, de desarrollo. Eh, la segunda posición es una posición limitada de dos años que está enfocado exclusivamente en el desarrollo de vivienda. Es decir, eh, se mencionaba que, que la ciudad está muy enfocada en, en el desarrollo de vivienda, específicamente eh, desarrollo asequible, eh, es decir, que, que la gente pueda pagar para poder vivir en Santa Rosa. Y eh, hay que clarificar que los tres puestos se cubrirían a nivel de planificador urbano o apre, aprendiz de planeador eh, urbano o urbana, que es un puesto de nivel de entrada. El, eh, la posición de planeador urbano eh, requiere una licenciatura universitaria eh, relacionada a planeación o en planeación o algún tema eh, similar y requiere al menos un año de experiencia. Mencionaba Jessica que eh, la diferencia entre planeador urbano o urbana y aprendiz es que la persona tiene un año de experiencia en el trabajo. Entonces, eh, la ciudad está dispuesta a contratar personas que no tienen esta experiencia y pueden entrar como aprendices en la parte de, de, de planeación. Eh, el principal uh, función que tienen los, los, los planeadores y planeadoras urbanas es ser el principal punto de contacto para consultas en planificación, no solo en el mostrador, pero también en el correo electrónico y en el teléfono. Y procesar permisos de planificación menores, eh, incluyendo, por ejemplo, el trabajo con personal del departamento de la ciudad y agencias externas, y también hacer eh, comunicación con la comunidad. También hacer presentaciones eh, al personal de diversas juntas de la ciudad, la Comisión de Planificación, la Junta de Revisión de Diseño y Patrimonio Cultural, la Administración de Zonificación y el Comité Asesor de Vías eh, Navegables. 
eh, una persona que está aplicando para planeación, para, para planeación urbana tiene que eh, tener una base sólida de prácticas de, plani de planificación urbana y experiencia en, en eh, revisión ambiental, revisión de desarrollo y apoyo en atención al público, que es una parte muy importante de lo que nosotros hacemos. Para el planeador eh, urbano o urbana que está entrando como aprendiz, Simplemente es una persona que no tiene el año eh, requerido de experiencia, pero la ciudad está trabajando para entrenarlo o entrenarla a que pueda tener esta experiencia y participará en exactamente las mismas eh, funciones que los planeadores urbanos, simplemente con apoyo y entrenamiento de la ciudad. Eh, ¿Qué estamos buscando en términos de la persona que queremos o personas que queremos contratar para la ciudad en estas dos posiciones. Primero, alguien que tenga muy buena comunicación oral y escrita, así como habilidades interpersonales, y alguien que pueda dar muy buen eh, servicio al cliente. Eh, mencionaba Claire en relación a, a, a atención al cliente, que estamos eh, muy interesados en encontrar personas que puedan comunicarse tanto en español como en inglés, porque nuestra clientela eh, habla español, eh, una, un gran porcentaje de la población habla en español y queremos servir a la comunidad de una manera eh, en la que la comunidad se sienta cómoda. Además de entender eh, las diferentes ex, eh, experiencias que tiene la comunidad y hacer política pública para esas comunidades que han sido eh, usualmente excluidas de estas conversaciones. Y bueno, adicional a esto, se mencionaban que queremos a alguien que tenga eh, un espíritu emprendedor y un fuerte compromiso con la comunidad y con el tema de planeación para que nos ayude a, a, a poder sacar adelante todos los proyectos que están sucediendo ahora en la ciudad. Eh, Claire mencionaba que los planeadores urbanos más eh, exitosos han sido eh, aprendices de, planea de planeador urbano en la ciudad y que se han convertido en directores incluso en, en otras ciudades de Sonoma County. Así que estamos buscando gente que quiera aprender y no, estas posiciones no están eh, en competencia. La única experiencia que, que, que estamos buscando es eh, la que ustedes hayan tenido incluso en sus proyectos escolares o en, en, en otro tipo de, de experiencias que puedan relacionarse a planeación. And I am done with this. I'm sorry it was too long, but I, I just got all the things that you uh, guys brought up in the, in the conversation. And, um, yeah what you mentioned about um, having people working in Sonoma County. So I thought Perfect. that was important. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Beatrice. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, so we're gonna move on um, to what it's like to be a new planner here in Santa Rosa. So I'm gonna turn it over to Connor McKay as well as Beatrice um, as some of our newest planners here at the city. So Connor, you wanna take it away? Yeah, thanks, Jess. Um, yeah, thanks everybody for being here and um, learning, the, learning about the position. Um, so, Yeah, like I said, I joined the city um, in January in 2020. And one thing that I really appreciated about um, joining the team is, I mean, especially as somebody who had not um, a whole lot of public planning experience at the time, I was basically given um, kind of smaller projects just to like familiarize myself with the whole process of um, what does it mean to send an incomplete letter or noticing and very, very fundamental um, processes that we would work on throughout all of the projects. And I was also paired with a mentor. So if I ever had any questions, I could just approach that person and say, hey, um, I'm having some trouble with this noticing language or, and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, I always feel super comfortable reaching out to anybody on the staff. Um, I feel like this is probably one of the most supportive places I've ever worked. Um, everybody um, is really, really uh, team oriented and it just feels really nice to be part of it. Um, so, Some of the projects that um, you might anticipate working on um, involve counter planning services um, and two different types of permits that I kind of categorized, which would be permits where there's not a whole lot of discretion involved and permits where there is discretion involved, meaning a permit that's more ministerial in nature. So a permit would be like um, a zoning clearance, which basically means that somebody's proposing to operate a business that the zoning allows for. So you just check for parking and other kind of minimum uh, zoning standards that they're complying with and they're just over the counter issued that approval. Um, signed permits are very similar. If they check the boxes and they comply with the standards of the signed ordinance, um, we just issue the approval letter. Um, we, the new one is um, short-term rental applications are also a ministerial permit that we work on. Um, if they comply with the standards established by our um, urgency ordinance, they um, are issued the approval. And we also provide planning review for building permits, um, which has also been a really cool experience because um, I hadn't looked at a whole lot of site plans uh, before starting this job. And now I, I, I look at a site plan and I can, you know, read it 
like a kind of like a book as opposed to looking at it like some type of Greek um, or some hieroglyph or something like that. Um, so I, I have learned so, so much here and um, everybody, like I said, is just really, really supportive and they, they didn't, you know, judge me for asking, you know, stupid questions because um, there really are no stupid questions because everybody's at a different, you know, level in their knowledge and experience. Um, so the, the permits that you do have a little bit of discretion um, involved are would be like a minor conditional use permit for a fence. Um, certain findings have to be made. So it's not like you're just coming out and saying, how do I feel today? Do I approve this or do I not? Um, the zoning code still gives you the basis for which that you should make your determinations on. So um, you, do, you make that analysis with um, your resolution and that process is um, overseen by uh, your supervisors so they, re they review your resolution and make sure that they you know all the all the findings can be made and stuff like that um, similar for standard minor conditional use permits where somebody is proposing a use um, that is conditionally permitted at a location um, and um, minor design review as well it's very similar but the, the findings themselves are different because they're more related to the design of the of the structure um, and then counter planning services is um, one of the most things I'm most experienced with. And that is basically just starting from scratch. Um, I, I remember walking up with uh, my coworker Monet when she was responding to a, a customer at the front counter and I, <laughs> my eyes were glazed over. I had no idea what was being discussed. I was um, very, very new to the counter planning stuff as well when I started. And it was completely fine. I just, I asked questions of Monet after about what we had just discussed. And she went over the zoning code sections with me and explained the, their question because that's a really important thing to really fully understand. Um, and now I feel very, very, very confident that anybody in the city could come up with some um, some question. And I'm, I'm very confident that I could at least have the resources to know where to look for that um, that type of uh, inquiry. Um, um, and then it's kind of similar to that, I also was, um, I had the opportunity to work on a pretty high profile project as kind of like a support role for uh, my coworker, Amy. And she was the project planner for the, um, journeys End site redevelopment project on mendocino avenue so i was participating in kind of behind the scenes meetings about um sequa and about easements and about all these kind of complicated um project management components that i wouldn't have otherwise gotten to experience and if i did experience them at that time i would not have been ready to um perform at that standard so i think that having that type of support project planner um, role for that project was really, really helpful for me because I got to see all those um, types of interactions and conversations without being 100% responsible for the project itself. So um, that's kind of, I think that's my, my soliloquy. Um, I, I'm really open. I think if, if I think my, I respond best to questions. I feel like sometimes the best information comes out as a response to questions. So I really, really want to encourage everybody to ask me or any of us um, any questions that you might have about the job or about about anything. So thanks again. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Connor. Uh, Beatrice, I'm going to invite you to translate what you can <laughs> of that as well as um, add anything that you want to add as also a new planner here at the city. Thank you, Jessica. Um, yeah, I'm going to translate just the uh, highlights that uh, Connor mentioned. I think, um, yeah, um, I'll go ahead. Uh, lo que Connor, Connor quiso decir en, en, en relación a, a su experiencia como, como planner es que um, él ha trabajado básicamente en dos tipos de permisos, los permisos que tienen discreción y los que no tienen discreción, eh, los, que, los que no tienen en general eh, mayor eh, complicación son aquellos en los que se revisan temas de zonificación y uno analiza si cumple o no cumple el proyecto con lo que se, con lo que se requería en, en, en la zonificación y da o no el permiso a, a, a la persona que está desarrollando. Eh, él mencionaba que los permisos de planeación para construcción han sido la cosa más interesante porque él ahora puede leer planos 
Eh, también dice que no se juzgó, uh, nunca se le juzgó por hacer preguntas tontas. Yo no creo que eran tontas, pero muy básicas. Y uh, Connor, Connor quería eh, tener esta experiencia y ahora se siente muy confiado con todas las cosas que ha aprendido y sabe al menos dónde buscarlas. Si no ha podido eh, encontrarlas en algún lugar, sabe dónde, dónde, dónde puede encontrarlas. Y él también mencionaba que ha tenido la, la oportunidad de trabajar en proyectos de muy alto perfil y saber cómo manejar estos proyectos porque ha trabajado con planeadores senior que le han permitido... Eh, asistir a las juntas y manejar CICUA, por ejemplo, eh, la legislación de California para protección ambiental, así como manejo de proyecto con, con clientes. Eh, on my side, um, besides uh, all, the, all the experience that uh, Connor uh, shared, I arrived to the city a year ago and I have been working for the advanced planning team and it has been a really amazing experience. I think uh, my work is focused on, on um, a different type of, of, uh, of work, mostly policy. And I think um, the general plan update has been an, an amazing experience. Uh, my job has been to plan community outreach. And I say plan because most of the pandemic has been challenging to do in-person events, but we're we're finally doing it. And if any of you are part of um, Santa Rosa or um, are planning to, to move in here, we're having a great uh, community outreach um, set of events in, in the next months. And mostly trying to be mindful of equity and how we reach out to communities that have not been taken into account when we do planning. And so um, we have worked on uh, developing our um, equity priority community. So basically looking into uh, mapping uh, work and data analysis work to figure out what are the communities that we need to pay more attention to because we haven't uh, done so in the past and we want to be mindful about this. We have also been working on an equity um, outreach strategy where we uh, physically go to the locations where people are uh, just to get Um, to the to the specific locations where we can find them and and uh, provide them um, mindful um, attention, including language um, access, as well as um, other types of activities where people can participate and feel confident that they're um, they they have knowledge to share, even when planning is uh, sounds like a, such a complex uh, process when we're talking about general plan updates or um, housing um, element uh, updates, which is happening right now too. So that said, um, I just want to also say that we have these opportunities. I have the opportunity to jump in into, like, for example, doing this community outreach that brought you guys here to this meeting and also uh, translate into Spanish and get to do um, a lot of changes in the department because our team is super progressive and super open minded. And I mean, we need a diverse crew of planners because we don't know what we don't know. And I, um, I am Latina, I am Mexican, but I don't know what all the um all, all the diversity of our community looks like and we really need more people who can help us uh, be more creative and uh, more more open and more um hard working about the needs that that the city has so this just to say that um if you're if you're willing to be part of this team i think as as connor was mentioning this is a great team it is an amazing opportunity to make change planning is is um something that has fundamentally um separated communities in the United States. And we have the chance to shift that um, in Santa Rosa to make it a better place. And I, I feel really grateful to have that opportunity. So I'm sharing this with you because I think um, this is an opportunity for you too. So that said, I'm just quickly going to translate the basic things that I mentioned. And I just want to tell you, um, yeah, uh, join us. Uh, I'm very excited to, to be here and I hope you are too. Eh, para las personas que nos están escuchando en español, quiero decirles que eh, mi experiencia en, en Santa Rosa ha sido muy buena. Yo eh, he tenido la oportunidad de trabajar en proyectos de eh, política pública más que de atención al público y estamos trabajando en la eh, actualización del plan general. Eh, básicamente estamos haciendo eh, alcance a la comunidad y involucramiento de la comunidad en temas de planeación y tratando de llegar a las comunidades que normalmente no han sido incluidas en esta conversación. Y solo quiero decirles que en esta parte hemos tenido oportunidad de llegar a comunidades eh, latinas, eh, las comunidades afroamericanas, comunidades eh, nativoamericanas que no han tenido eh, participación en, en los temas de planeación. Y también quiero decirles que esto no solo es una oportunidad de, de involucramiento con la comunidad, también es una oportunidad de cambiar eh, lo que la historia ha hecho en, en términos de eh, separación de comunidades en, en los Estados Unidos. Y nos gustaría que, que ustedes forman parte de este equipo, porque yo soy latina y mexicana y me, me encanta el trabajo que hago aquí y tengo la oportunidad de organizar eventos como estos donde podemos llegar a ustedes y e invitarlos en esta 
en estas conversaciones y tener esta, esta interacción con ustedes, pero necesitamos más gente que eh, sea parte de, de la diversidad en la comunidad y que quiera, que quiera ser parte de este equipo y los invitamos a que, a que se unan con nosotros. Yo estoy muy contenta de trabajar aquí. Muchas gracias. Great. Thank, you so, thank you so much, Beatriz. That was awesome. Um, okay, so I'm going to now hand it over uh, back over to uh, Serena and Jamie to talk about um, the process for application. So take it away. Thank you. I needed to uh, unmute myself there. Anyway, um, uh, it's great information. Thank you all. Um, I'm, what I'm going to talk about is uh, how to apply and and just as importantly, um, some tips for you on kind of how to get through the process, how to put your best foot forward through our process, and how the um, the selection process at the city works. Because uh, I know there's some mystery around that, so hopefully we can uh, demystify that for you. And if you have questions, of course, um, we can answer those. Um, uh, Jessica, I would appreciate... Oh, so um, the closing date for applications, as I mentioned before, um, is uh, March 14th. Uh, it's at 11.59 p.m., but please do not wait until the last minute. If you start applying um, and then wait and then submit it after 11.59 p.m., we will not accept it. So just to be aware, it will not come through. We've had that before, where people start and then pause, come back to it, and then try to, and they submit it later. It looks like it went through, but it doesn't come through to me if you try to submit it after midnight. So please keep that in mind. Um, and we cannot be responsible if, if um, there is a, you know, a, um, a failure in the internet or anything like that. It's just always best to do, you know, to do it ahead of time. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out uh, to us and ask if you need some help. So Jessica, if you could please click on that where it says visit. Yeah, I'll show you what. It, hopefully, this will work. If it let's if, close, cross our fingers and hope it works. Yeah. May not work within this. Uh, I may need to reshare. Hold on. No problem. Well, I can I can talk uh, until then. So you're going to be applying online at srcity.org um, slash jobs. Um, you'll be creating a profile on governmentjobs.com. If you have applied to either the city or to another agency that has um, that uses governmentjobs.com, you'll see that in the URL. Um, if you put in srcity.org slash jobs, this will automatically take you here. Um, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, it goes to governmentjobs.com. So many other government agencies use this application um, uh, process. Um, and uh, if you've applied elsewhere before, your profile may show up. If it does, I want to encourage you to make sure that the information that um, you have in there is current. That would be your address, your email address, your um, uh, your job history. Um, sometimes people submit something and don't realize they didn't update it. And so we don't see your current job. So therefore we disqualify you because um, we don't see that you have the latest experience. So what I'd appreciate if you could do, Jessica, is click on show more. Yeah. Right in the middle oh, toward the top. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So there's some information there that's hidden. So that's why I wanted you to click on it so we can see it there. There is an online application guide under how to apply it set and right above application requirements. If you click here, it says for an online application guide and FAQ, click here, uh, down a little bit right there. Yeah, so that's an online um, guide for you that goes to um, governmentjobs.com and shows you how to apply in case you would like a little help. So, or if you run into any problems um, accessing your account, if it tells you you already have an account, you can go there and get some help. So if you can back out of that, please, and go back to the application, or I'm sorry, to the posting, and go down there and you'll, uh, oh yeah, hit click uh, see more again, please. Show more, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, um, I just wanted to note on here, there's a little bit more information here um, that, oh, great, thank you, Beatrice. Um, yeah, if you scroll down there, it's got some application requirements. It also has a note about equal opportunity. We've mentioned, you know, all, all who uh, all are welcome to apply. We encourage um, diverse, diversity, diverse group of um, applicants. We want you all to apply if you have the ability to work in the United States. So. And we also, if you have a request for reasonable accommodation that you need um, during the process, I would help you with that. So you just click on that form or just give me a call. All right. And so if you go back out of that, or actually, you know, I think if you just scroll down, there you go. 
And now you can pick up City Planner, City Planner Trini, and click on that. And scroll down a little bit. So this is where the posting shows up. Um, you see the picture there. Um, and later on, we will put a link in there to this recorded Zoom meeting. Um, you've got, we've got a little bit about the benefits of city employment. If you can scroll down a little bit more, please. We have information about the positions. And I encourage you to read through this because I think reading this will also help give you context to the, um, the, the supplemental questions that you will be answering during the application process, because it's very important for you to, to answer those questions carefully, and I'll go more into that in a moment. So there's some more information about what we're looking for that I think that's probably reflects everything we, what we've already talked about. Um, and you scroll down it, it uh, a little bit more, please. And what it, one of the things that I will say a lot, say a number of times uh, in my remarks here is how important it is to complete a thoughtful, thorough um, application process. This should represent you and your best work. And so um, we want you to answer the questions fully and complete the application in its entirety. And before you do that, again, read through the examples of duties and responsibilities and the qualifications that we're looking for. So can you please scroll down to the qualification section? As it has already been mentioned, a minimum of a year of experience is required at the city planner level. If you do not um, demonstrate in your application that you have a year of experience, we'll consider you at the city planner trainee level. And we do have a question in there about what positions or what levels you're applying for. Um, but it, for a city planner level, you need to have one year of experience and equivalent to a bachelor's degree from a college or university with major study in planning or a related field considered useful in city planning work. Well, what is that? I believe we have that information if you scroll down a little bit more, please. No, it's, it's not on there, but it is on the supplemental questions, so we'll go there. So if you can scroll up, please. Um, there's another, yeah, if you just click on benefits just very quickly. There's also just wanted to point out, you can click through that. You don't need to do this now, Jessica, but um, just note for potential people who are interested, if you want to see all of the great benefits that the city offers, and they really are good benefits, then click through that and um, get, to get more information. And there's another link as well in the regular um, the job announcement. So if you can click on questions, please, we'll go over the supplemental questions. So, um, let's see. So what these are, there are some questions that will be presented to you during the application process. Um, in, uh, and then there will, that are asked of all applicants for the city. And one of those asks the, the different languages that you speak, make sure that you answer that question. I'd like to encourage you to do that because we want to really encourage people who are bilingual um, and in many different language, languages potentially. Um, you'll, and then you'll get to this part where you answer questions about this job specifically. And we are very careful about these questions that we ask, and we ask them for a reason, and that is because this is what we will be using to evaluate the applications as they come in. So we do plan, we do anticipate that we will get a lot of applications for this. And what we do is we put together a panel. Um, well, first process is I review the applications to make sure that they are complete and determine who meets the minimum qualifications for the planner level and who would meet them for trainee. Um, and uh, after that, then we, we put together a committee who reviews the applications and they review the supplemental questions in particular. And these supplemental questions are designed for you to demonstrate how you are qualified for this position, how you are best qualified for it. So it's very important for you to complete these. Uh, do not say re see resume anywhere in response to these questions. Do not paste from your resume or from the job history section. I see that a lot. Unfortunately, I need to disqualify people who do that because we really want to know um, this information here. So I wanted you to encourage you to read all parts of the question, make sure that you answer all parts of the question. So, um, oh, and one more thing, I, I'm sorry, I just skipped over it. When you're listing your job history, um, we wanna make sure that you list all of the jobs that you've had going back 10 years. If you have 10 years of work history, if you don't, that's fine too, but all the jobs that you've had within the last 10 years. And then also um, um, if you worked for one organization and had uh, several different roles, list those separately or make it clear either through it, its own um, section, um, its own separate listing um, or 
make it very clear in the duties how long you worked at each level because that will help us qualify you and will give context to the answers that you give here in the supplemental questionnaire. So I'm not going to read all of these questions, but I will point out that um, the first ones are asking about which types of positions that you're interested in. These are going to be, you know, yes or no, or check the box. Um, uh, on um, uh, question number three, note, this is where we list out uh, positions that are similar to urban planning that would qu could qualify you. And that would be uh, urban planning, geography, biology, or other life sciences, environmental studies, political science, government, architectural, civil engineering, survey. So there's a lot of different, um, a lot of different um, types of education that could qualify you for this position. So I want to encourage you if you have a degree in, or almost have a degree in one of these other fields that you could qualify for this position as well. So then the next questions, um, it, uh, it asks you more about your degree. Can you please scroll down, um, Jessica? Question number five is how we're going to look at qualifying uh, and seeing what level that you're qualified for. Question number six will do the same. And then the questions seven, eight, and nine, um, a lot of the, these are questions we'll be asking you to describe your experience. We're not asking for um, a list. So sometimes people will put bulleted lists. We really want a description. Um, we want to understand the level of responsibility that you had. And also, you know, if you've done more than one thing for it, within those, we want to know the breadth of your experience, the level of your experience. And if you don't have direct experience in that area, I want to encourage you to uh, describe similar experience that you have and, and where you've demonstrated transferable skill. Because again, this is a trainee position. So if you haven't had direct experience, tell us how your experience, and that could be um, in coursework, class projects, volunteer um, experience in the community, in particular um, working with people. Um, and this is where, you know, really getting kind of understanding by looking at the job announcement and the description of the duties of the position where you can see really what it is that this person that you would be doing as a city planner and trainee and tailing, tailoring your answer around that about how you're prepared to take on that work as a trainee. So I um, wanted to uh, make sure I encourage you to do that. Um, and also, by the way, you can attach a resume. Do not rely on that to tell your story. Because when we put our panels together, we, the panel will be looking at your responses to these questions and your work history, and they will not have access to your resume. So do not let that, um, um, just uh, don't lose that opportunity. Make sure you answer these questions and, and include your experience here, because that's really what we're going to be focused on. All right. So, um, and the number, what we're going to do with that is that will help us determine who are the most qualified, who most prepared to take on this role and then refer them to the department for their interviews. And as Claire mentioned, we'll, we can, um, we will keep this list on our file. So if future openings come up, we can go back to this list and hire in, in the future. So I think that's it. I've said quite a lot. Um, and just to encourage you to treat your application as seriously as you would an interview. And also we encourage you to, um, uh, print out your application before you submit it and have somebody you trust look at it. They may see something that maybe you've missed, um, maybe something that isn't that clear and they can help you. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to either raise your hand or put something in the chat box. And if there's anything else that uh, Serena, maybe I missed um, on the application process, would you like I to think, add? I think you, I think you covered it well. Um, and I know that we're coming up to our stop time. So I wanna make we sure um, Beatriz has a chance to do some uh, interpretation. And then if there's any questions um, that anybody might have. Uh, Serena, if it's okay, I'm gonna leave this uh, minutes for the people who attended the meeting and I can go on and translate it later so it gets recorded, but the, we didn't yes. give this time to the people who attended, if that's okay. Perfect. That'd be great. Thank you for that. All right. I have a lot to say, I ran out of time. I apologize for that. That's okay. We wanted to be thorough. And so um, this is a unique opportunity in that we have so many positions available. This doesn't usually happen. So we wanted to capitalize on this opportunity and really um, try to showcase the breadth of the work that we do. Um, and it's a tedious and daunting process to apply for <laughs> you know, government positions. And so we wanted to make sure that we were being thorough with kind of 
um, explaining what that process is. So, um, all right, are there any questions? And again, put your hand or put it in the chat out of the way, <laughs> it's fine. Yes, Someone Brady. asked a question. Okay, cool, yes, thanks. Yes, Brady. <laughs> Hi, yeah, I'll volunteer. Um, uh, first off, thanks so much for hosting this info session. Um, I think this is a really unique opportunity and like getting to actually talk about it with people is great because there's a lot of like sort of barriers and applying for jobs and stuff. So I really appreciate all the good, great, great info. Um, I kind of, I'll preface this by saying I'm a second year master's of public administration student. Um, I don't know how many other folks here are not planners by education and um, Jamie had alluded to some of the non-traditional pathways to, to a planning career. And I was just wondering if any of you had any kind of like success stories of people in your department or maybe people you've worked with previously who did come into planning from a non-planning education and, and how that kind of worked out for them. So we'll jump you in. a lot of, uh, we, we don't all have planning degrees. Um, I, I happen to, I'm kind of old school, um, but we also had a lot of success with the uh, planners that came in from with geography, or I think we've even looked at um, well, environmental studies, because it's really a broad um, position. You're sometimes you're engaging, sometimes you're analyzing, sometimes you're doing public speaking and report writing. So because it's so broad, um, we, it is a team sport. Um, as Connor was saying, we support each other. We support each other's talents and backgrounds. Um, and so together we make it work. So usually everyone brings something uh, to the table and we work with that. All right. There was a question in the chat box and thank you, um, Beatrice, for replying. Um, but the question was, is the training position only for students or can recent grads apply? And, and yes, as she mentions, recent grads can apply, so, and we encourage it, or if you're about to. <laughs> uh, and I'll add to that is, yes, we <laughs> definitely looking for recent grads. Um, I think that we, we welcome that. Um, if you are a student, um, the intention, I think Claire mentioned this, is that we would expect um, a person to be qualified for the city planner um, level within one year and be able to do that. So we would take you on as a trainee if you're in your final year toward your degree. If you're not quite there yet, then I don't think you would qualify for this position. We're looking for somebody who's going to be able to graduate and have that degree within one year. Okay, any other questions? Oh, yes, Charles. Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Do we now? Yeah. There we go, there we go. <laughs> I had that up the entire time, sorry. Uh, so assuming the application process goes through completely uh, smoothly, uh, what, is, what is the expected timeline for the rest of it? So I'm assuming there would be an interviewing process and then it would go into a, uh, and then you would basically be hired after that. Yeah. What do you think the time frame on that would look like? Well, there are multiple steps and caveats um, as part of that process. So Jamie talked about it a little bit where once the application, so I guess a short way of saying it is, it's kind of hard to say. However, um, typically once the application closes, uh, HR does the preliminary review of the minimum qualifications. And then depending on the number of applications that are received, can, can put some delays on that process a bit. But then we would go to a paper screening or an application screening process. And then we, then we shift to the department interviews. So um, we'll likely have a two-step process where there will be an oral board for this, the most qualified candidates. And then those that are deemed most qualified from the oral board will go into um, a secondary interview process. So that can take a few weeks to do. Um, because we need to be able to provide ample notice, get everything scheduled, so on and so forth. So you're probably looking at like at least um, four to six weeks probably for, to just to get through those steps. And then once the successful candidate or candidates are identified, if um, they're an external candidate, then we go into 
a pretty extensive background process, which I'll be honest, is taking a little extra time these days. Uh, oh, yeah. COVID has presented some challenges with that. And so uh, there'll, be, uh, there'll be a few steps along in that process. And then we always want to work with the candidate with if they have a current employer um, and we, we work with them to, for a start date. So it can take a solid probably couple months at least to bring somebody on board. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, any other questions? Did I miss somebody? Oh, yes, Jess. Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, we're, we're uh, at time at this point, so I don't want to keep anybody beyond what we had promised. Um, but uh, definitely, you know, if there's questions, um, you can uh, feel free to reach out. Jamie or Serena, should they reach out to you if they have further questions? Um, appropriate? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, we can put our, um, our emails in the chat. Okay, perfect, thank you. So um, I just wanted to, and I'll, I'll let Claire do the same, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're super excited about um, these positions that are, are open and um, really looking forward to um, getting some great people on board and uh, really encourage you guys to apply. So Claire, I don't know, do you wanna add anything more? I don't wanna take any more time of yours, but um, yeah, I'm just, happy to have offer these positions and it really is fun um what we do we actually really enjoy the work and we enjoy the people so um it's a great opportunity and uh, i welcome your applications and it looks like uh, yes connor also put his name in the chat so uh, you can email him for find out what is it what it's like for a day in the life of a city planner <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks everybody uh, beatrice do you want to stay on to translate yeah, I'm going to stay on if that's okay. And I'm going to share my screen uh, and finish the recording if, if that's possible. So, okay, do you need me to stay on with you to do that? Um, I can just stay to on. give me. Okay, thank you, okay. Uh, Michelle. Right, great. Thank you, Jessica. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you. I'll stay here. Thank you. Uh, gracias a las personas que se quedaron voy a um, ahora hacer la, la, toda la revisión de lo que Jamie eh, realizó en, en, en inglés voy, voy a hacer todo el proceso de aplicación eh, en mi lado derecho y, y voy a proyectarlo en la, en la pantalla so, voy a mostrar eh, voy a compartir mi pantalla ahora y lo que están viendo eh, can you please let me know if, if my screen is, is being shared Great. muchas gracias uh, so Ustedes están viendo la página de eh, uh, oportunidades de, de contratación de la ciudad. Aquí pueden ver la posición de, de City Planner y City Planner Trainee, que son las posiciones de las que estamos hablando. Uh, solo una cosa adicional. Si ustedes quieren ver esto en español para facilitar su revisión, ustedes pueden poner Translate to Español y esto va a cambiar todo la, el idioma. Así que ustedes pueden verlo en el idioma que les parezca eh, más, más fácil. Eh, voy, voy a seguir eh, en inglés. Pero eh, si ustedes quieren hacerlo en español, pueden hacerlo en español y pueden traducir en cualquier momento. Uh, Jamie nos estaba mostrando eh, que esta posición eh, incluye todas, toda la descripción de, de, de planners. Aquí está eh, la invitación a la reunión del día de hoy. Y como pueden ver, aquí están los salarios y los beneficios de la ciudad. Ella mencionaba que revisen los beneficios de la ciudad porque esto es algo importante y que de verdad tenemos eh, buenos beneficios en, en, en la ciudad para, para aprovechar. Y es una de las cosas que nos, que nos distingue de otras, eh, de otras comunidades. Así que, por favor, eh, revísenlo. Como ella mencionaba, no esperen al último minuto para presentar su solicitud. Cierra a las, a las, eh, las 11.59 eh, de, del día que, que está marcado en, en, en el día límite. Y por favor, eh, revisen eh, la aplicación eh, y hagan, hagan clic en, en cómo presentar una solicitud eh, para, en, en, en la página web que compartimos. La compartí en la liga de, la, de, la, de, la, eh, de nuestro chat. Eh, si ustedes no tienen un perfil para, para eh, governmentjobs.com, um, uh, government por favor, eh, créenlo. Y entonces ustedes van a tener que dar clic eh, en, en aplicar. Está el botón aquí arriba y pueden acceder a través de ese botón. Eh, si ustedes eh, quieren eh, vol volver a las preguntas que se van a preguntar, perdón, a las preguntas que se van a hacer en esta aplicación, ustedes pueden entrar en la parte que dice questions y si ustedes lo, trans lo traducen a español, 
Ustedes pueden verlo en español y aquí están preguntas. Entonces dan clic en esa, en esa opción y como pueden ver, la mayoría de las preguntas son de opción múltiple. Sin embargo, tenemos algunas que son preguntas abiertas a partir eh, del número 6. Eh, Jamie mencionaba que las solicitudes... Eh, deben estar completas para poder, eh, para poder entregarse, especialmente pongan atención a las preguntas complementarias. Eh, si ustedes eh, cumplen con todas las características, envíen la solicitud, pero recuerden que eh, incluyan todo, todo lo, que, lo que se está solicitando, adicionalmente un CV que debe estar incluido pegado al, 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 a la aplicación que ustedes están mandando, se los va a requerir. Eh, la, algunas eh, recomendaciones que, que Jamie hizo para, para poder eh, atender estas preguntas complementarias es que eh, usted, eh, ustedes envíen hasta los últimos 10 años de experiencia laboral, si es que la tienen. Si no la tienen, no necesitan enviarla. Eh, asegúrense de incluir su trabajo actual y asegúrense que cada trabajo puedan incluir qué es lo que usted hacía en cada, en cada trabajo qué duración eh, tuvo su trabajo y el nivel de responsabilidad que ustedes tenían en cada uno de ellos. También que enumere cada posición por separado para que dejen claro cuánto tiempo pasó entre cada función y si ascendió desde la misma organización y qué tipo de habilidades tienen ustedes. Eh, si las solicitudes no están completas o no cumplen con los requisitos, se descalifican automáticamente. Entonces, eh, no haga referencia a su currículum. Eh, ustedes van a tener la posibilidad de anexarlo, pero por favor no especifiquen que eso es lo que ustedes, eh, que, que está en su currículum o vea su currículum. Háganlo directamente en, en la respuesta a las preguntas que se les están haciendo. ¿Cómo se evalúan estas aplicaciones? Y voy, voy a, eh, a, a dejar de, de, de compartir eh, mi pantalla. Eh, y voy a hablar directamente de lo que Jamie mencionó eh, sobre evaluación de, de estos eh, requisitos. Ella mencionó que hay una página web eh, en, el, en, el, eh, en nuestra página de, de Santa Rosa donde ustedes pueden eh, verificar cuáles son los requisitos para, para eh, la evaluación de nuestros, de nuestros procesos. Y compartí el link en el, en el, en el chat, pero voy a compartir eh, mi pantalla de nuevo para que ustedes vean eh, la página. Eh, Estoy, estoy compartiendo del lado derecho. Esta es el, la, la revisión de la, de la aplicación. Nuevamente, si ustedes quieren traducir, ustedes pueden eh, poner Translate to Español y ustedes van a tener cómo se, cómo se evalúan las, las uh, aplicaciones en español y pueden revisarlo aquí. Eh, Jamie me, me mencionaba que nosotros hacemos una revisión primero eh, de, cuántas, eh, de, de los requisitos mínimos para que ustedes pasen a la siguiente fase. Y el paquete se, se califica principalmente en función de las respuestas complementarias. Entonces, no se revisan los, los archivos adjuntos, no pongan su currículum eh, anexo eh, como parte de la experiencia complementaria, incluyanlo en las respuestas que ustedes van a dar. Aquí pueden, eh, aquí pueden ver que el, el, el cuestionario suplementario es necesario de, de responder. Y en términos generales, se, una vez que se analiza esta experiencia eh, laboral, se hace referencia a las preguntas eh, para ver si ustedes cumplen con las calificaciones mini, mínimas y escoger a las personas más calificadas. El grupo más eh, calificado es invitado al siguiente proceso de selección, que normalmente es una entrevista. Y eh, solo para, para continuar con los consejos que Jamie nos estaba eh, comentando, ustedes pueden revisar esa página, pero también recuerden que, eh, leer todas las partes de las, de las preguntas eh, cuando se le piden que describa su experiencia, escriba oraciones descriptivas, eh, no haga listas nada más. Describa su nivel más alto de, resp de responsabilidad o experiencia más complicada. Eh, si no tiene experiencia directa, describa una experiencia similar que muestre eh, habilidades transferibles o clases de, eh, de las escuelas, proyectos de clase, pasantías que haya hecho, trabajo voluntario u otros trabajos. Y si escribe respuestas o preguntas complementarias en Word, puede copiar y pegar eh, desde la aplicación Recuerden no incluir viñetas porque se aparecen desordenadas en el, en el sistema. Y trate la solicitud con seriedad para que eh, sea muy similar a como usted haría una entrevista. Y la aplicación eh, debe, presentarla, eh, debe representarte a ti y a tu mejor trabajo y debe ser capaz de imprimir eh, la solicitud antes de enviarla para poderla revisar en físico. Y si, si tiene la oportunidad, pedirle a alguien de confianza que lea su solicitud antes de enviarla. Eh, recuerden, la fecha límite de envío de la solicitud es el 14 de marzo, 11.59 de la, de la noche. Y el número de Jamie, por si tienen alguna duda, es el 707-543-3066. Uh, that was the whole translation, and I went through the, through the website, and um, 
showed people how to translate um, the the application and the and the process that Jamie the application screening process that Jamie uh, shared with us. And I think we're basically done. And um, I I can just go ahead and do you want me to to translate any of the questions um, that were on the chat just just to go further? Sure. If you can remember what the questions were, yeah, I think it's a yeah. good idea. Yeah. Okay, I, I have them on, on the chat. And I think the first one was, um, la primera pre pregunta fue, is there trainee positions for students or um, can recent grants apply? Uh, la pregunta que nos hicieron, la primera, estoy traduciendo algunas de las preguntas que nos hicieron durante la, de, durante la conversación, es si eh, las posiciones de eh, trainee positions so, solo son para eh, personas que se acaban de graduar o si otras personas pueden aplicar o si solo son para estudiantes. La respuesta es sí, sí pueden aplicar. Y sí pueden, eh, pueden venir eh, personas que se hayan graduado recientemente, no necesitan ser estudiantes. Eh, um, the, we, there was another question before that, and I don't remember the exact question. Does anyone recall um, the, the, one of the questions, that, the first one that we had? There was one that the, the young man asked about um, uh, uh, examples of different degrees, like if you don't have oh. a planning degree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Serena. Um, the, the first question that was asked, um, what was that? So, la primera pregunta que, que, que nos hicieron fue si había otras personas que podían aplicar a la, a la posición que no fueran únicamente planeadores urbanos. La respuesta es sí. Tenemos personas que pueden aplicar eh, con, con eh, licenciaturas en geografía, biología, eh, tenemos también personas que estudiaron administración pública y otras, eh, otras eh, licenciaturas que están escritas en el, en el espacio que, que Jamie eh, mostró en, el, en, en la aplicación y ustedes pueden revisar eh, cuáles son las licenciaturas que, que, que tenemos ahí eh, disponibles. Um, and I think those were all the questions. So, I think we're done with all the translation, except if you need me to translate anything else that you think would be useful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah, that was great. Uh, I'm sorry we ran over. I think we learned a lesson that it takes a little longer, yeah. say a little less, um, but great job. And uh, yeah, I think 